What's up everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, we're gonna do some more practice with direct proofs. This time we're gonna prove statements that involve divisibility. So these are the four statements that we're gonna prove. These are conditional statements. We're gonna prove them using the direct proof method. And hopefully this video helps. If you're trying to practice, pause it now. Try some of this on your own. Pull out a pencil and paper. The video will be time stamped up as always. And hopefully this helps. Let's jump right into it. What does this A vertical bar B mean? We read this out loud as A divides B. And it's really important we know what this means, right? We're about to prove a statement that uses this notation, uses this concept. So we really should know the definition. So let's jump into that first. If you already know what this means, then feel free to skip ahead. But let's talk about what does it mean to say that A divides B. A divides B. Again, that's how we read this because this may be unfamiliar language, but what hopefully is a lot more familiar is B is divisible by A, right? So we know what it means for a number to be divisible by another number, and it turns out that these two things are equivalent. They mean the same thing. So A divides B is another way of saying B is divisible by A, and so you can probably think of some examples. For example, 18 is divisible by three, and how we often think about it is using division because 18 divided by 3 gives us a whole number with no remainder. In other words, 3 goes into 18 is another way I often hear people talk about it. That's a perfectly fine way to think about it in terms of division. However, when we're writing formal proofs and we're thinking about a formal definition for A divides B, what we tend to like is multiplication, right? Instead of saying 18 is divisible by 3, because 18 divided by 3 is 6, we can say 18 is divisible by 3 because we can multiply 3 by an integer to get 18, right? So again, we could take this top and actually multiply 3 by both sides and get this, but it's another way of thinking about divisibility. And you might say, well, that sounds a lot like B is a multiple of A, and it turns out that this is another way to say the same thing. B is divisible by A, B is a multiple of A, right? So again, the definition that we prefer for proving purposes is that B is divisible by A if B equals A times some integer, right? So B equals AK for some integer K. Another way to say this is using there exists, right? There exists, that's this big ac backwards E. There exists an integer K, and then we say such that B equals AK. This is probably more common. I prefer the for some language. You'll, I tend to use that a lot, but again, two ways of saying the same thing. Gotta love math, right? So again, B equals AK for some integer K. That's what it means to say A divides B or B is divisible by A. This is the definition that we're gonna use for writing our proofs. Now, hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and continue and start on the first proof. So I outlined a strategy in my last video. I linked it above. Statements involving even and odd integers, another good introduction to direct proof. My strategy for direct proof is we always want to assume the if statement. Right, So that's the first part of our direct proof is suppose, I like the term suppose, A divides B. We want to unpack what this means. I always like to apply the definitions, right? So then what can we say? Well, B equals A times K for some integer K, right? So all we've done is we've made our assumption. We're going to assume that A divides B, and then what we want to show is that a divides bc for any integer c. So let's write down here what we want to show, right? So I'll write WTS, what we want to show is that a divides bc. What does that mean? Well, that means that bc can be written as a times an integer. Since I used k already, I'll use an l, right? Really important to write out what we want to show because that's gonna guide our proof. We wanna think about how do we use this assumption to get to what we want to show. So let's think about that. We have b equals a times k, where k is just some integer. We want to say something about b times c, so maybe we should multiply b times c. In order to do that, we need to first say, let c be an integer. This should make sense because 
what it says here is for any integer c. We're trying to show that a divides bc for any integer c. So we need to let c be an arbitrary integer in order to do that. Hopefully that makes sense. So if we let c be an integer, then what is bc? Well, we know b is a times k, right? So bc is a times k times c, right? Okay, how are we going to show what we want to show? bc equals a times an integer. Well, I think we're actually already there. We can make it a little more explicit with some parentheses here, right? So why we're actually there is because k is an integer, c is an integer, the product of two integers is an integer, right? So what we can say is since kc is an integer, bc equals a times some integer. So therefore, A divides BC, and that's literally it. So we can think of this, what we want to show as kind of scratch work. We can erase it so everyone thinks we just did this and knew exactly how to do it, <laughs> right? That's what they do in textbooks, by the way. Awesome. Hopefully this makes sense. This is the completed proof. Let's try the next example. All right, if A divides B and B divides C, then A divides C. This is often called transitivity. Right? We're sort of traveling through A to B, B to C, A to C. And this should make some intuitive sense. Think about some examples if it doesn't make sense why this is true. Like, for example, 2 divides 8. Anything 8 divides has to also be divisible by 2, right? Write out, like, a bunch of different options. And hopefully you can see, no matter what you write out, you're going to be able to factor a 2 out of it. So this is, in fact, always true, but we want to prove it, not just use examples and convince ourselves. We want to write a proof. So again, direct proof method, we're going to assume this, A divides B and B divides C. So two parts to our assumption here. Suppose A divides B and B divides C. So then what does that mean? Then, this time we'll use the there exists, I'll be fancy. Then there exists an integer Let's see, should we call it k? We'll call it k. Then there exists an integer k such that b equals a k. And what else does there exist? There exists an integer l such that c equals b l. OK, now let's think about what we want to show. We want to show that a divides c. So we want to show that a divides c, which is writing c as a times some integer. I'll just write a question mark there. Again, this is scratch work. We're just thinking ahead of what we're trying to show so we can think about how we're going to show it. So we want to say something about c, that c equals a times an integer. I have c isolated here. I think that could help me. Let's see, I have c equals b times l. Oh, and I also know that b equals a times k. So what I can write here is then by substitution, and hopefully everyone watching sees what I mean by substitution, right? B equals A times K and C equals a B times L. So I'm going to replace this B with A times K, right? And what I get is C equals, I write it in parentheses to make it clear, a times k times l. Oh, and now I see what I can do here. By associated property, I can regroup. And now what I have is a times some integer. So we've got exactly what we want to show, right? So let me erase my want to show statement, make myself look super clever, and just write a concluding statement of since k times l is an integer, a divides C, right? That's the definition of A divides C, is that C equals A times an integer. Awesome. All right, hopefully we're following this. That's pretty nice. So we're seeing a similar structure. We make the assumption we need to make. We write out what it is we want to show, and then we do some kind of algebra. In this case, we did substitution. In the last case, we multiplied by something, right? There's always some kind of little trick, and then we get exactly what we want to show. So let's try this next one. If A divides B and C divides D, then AC divides BD. All right, so let's think about this again. Direct proof method. Here's our assumption here. Suppose A divides B and 
c divides d. So again, another two-parter. So what does this mean? Then there exists, I'll use this there exists language again, there exists an integer k such that b equals a k and there exists an integer l such that d equals cl. All right, did I get that correct? Yes, awesome, sounds good. Now, what do we want to show? Let's think about that. We want to show that AC divides BD. What exactly does that mean? That BD equals A times C times some integer. Again, I'll just write a question mark there to make it clear that some integer. Again, it's just scratch work. How are we going to show that? Well, we have B equals AK. We have, whoops, we have D equals CL. So if we want to say something about B times D, then I think we can. Then B times D is equal to AK times CL. Hopefully everyone sees that. B times D is equal to AK times CL. Again, the parentheses, I know it's the same without the parentheses. I'm just trying to make it explicit here what I did, right? B is AK. D is CL, B times D is AK times CL. Now, what is it that we want to show again? That B times D equals A times an integer. I think we can get there from the next step, right? Because we know that B times D equals A times, let's see, okay, wait, it's A times C times an integer. We can get there, okay. So using associative and community properties, we can regroup, we can shift the parentheses around, we can move the C here, and we can rewrite AK times CL is AC times KL. Hopefully everyone sees why the both these right-hand sides of these equations are equivalent and why we can do that. Should be able to do this without justification and a proof at this level, right? Just using basic properties here. KL is an integer. And since that's the case, we've shown what we want to show, that AC divides BD. So again, it's making our assumption, it's thinking about what we want to show, we can use it as scratch work, and then it's thinking about how do we get there, right? Substitution, multiplying by something, adding something, whatever it is, we just think about how do we show what we want to show. It's usually just some algebraic manipulations. Awesome. I think this is the last one. If A divides B and A divides C, then A divides BX plus cy for any integers x and y. All right, let's think about this. We're going to make our assumption, right? So suppose, again, this is the direct proof method. a divides b and a divides c. Then what do we get to say? I'm going back to my for some language. Then b equals a k for some k. This is just what sounds more natural to me. And C equals, let's see, B equals AK and C equals AL for some integer L. All right. Then, what's the then statement? Then A divides BX plus CY for any integers X and Y. All right, so that's what we want to show here, is that A divides BX plus CY. And what that means is that we want to show that BX plus CY equals A times an integer. All right, how in the world are we going to do that? Well, we need to at some point introduce X and Y, and we need them to be arbitrary integers. So we should probably go ahead and do that. Let x and y be integers. Let x and y be integers. All right, well, we did that. Now, what exactly is it that we want to show? Let's see, bx plus cy is equal to a. How can we show that? Well, we know that b equals ak, so maybe we can figure out what bx is and we can figure out what CY is. I think that'll be helpful. Then, 
bx, what does that equal? Well, that equals akx. And cy equals ally. Awesome. All right, so we just multiply both sides by b equals ak by x and c equals al by y. And now we want to say something about bx plus cy. So maybe we should add those together. So what is bx plus cy? Well, bx is akx, and cy is ally. All right, so we know what bx plus cy is, and what are we trying to show again? Remember, a question mark, so a times some integer. I think we can do that. Hopefully you see how we can factor an a out of both of these terms, right? Both terms share an a in common. We can factor the a out, and what we're going to end up with is bx plus cy equals a times kx plus, let's see, ly. Let me double check. I can distribute it back in, make sure I got where I was. Looks good. And now we can write a couple of concluding sentences. I may have to erase my want to show because I've already shown what I want to show. But now all we're trying to say is, look, what are we trying to say? Well, kx plus ly is in fact an integer, right? Multiplying and adding integers together results in integers. So we can say, since kx plus ly is an integer, bx plus cy equals a times an integer, and therefore a divides bx plus cy. So you can add in that little detail if you want to, if you're like turning this in or trying to really, really formally write it up. But hopefully this made sense. This was our last example. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles. And I'll see y'all next time.